Hey there, uh, today is Tuesday, June 11th, and yesterday was exactly nine weeks since uh, I started using my J-Pouch, so it's just been a little bit over two months. I know I said I would make a video uh, at eight weeks, but <laughs> I'm making it at nine weeks. Um, so I made a list of, of different things to talk about. Um, overall, things are still going well. Um, Things are continuing to progress in the positive direction, albeit slowly, um, not as quickly as I would like, but still going in, in a good direction. Um, I wanted to just say kind of overall, uh, I had seen in an uh, earlier video someone who had had a J-pouch and they were talking a lot about after you have your surgery and you're using your J-Pouch, be prepared, you're on your own, you're no longer seeing the surgeon anymore, um, you know, you just have to kind of figure things out for yourself. And I was thinking, well, that's kind of a pretty negative way to think about everything. Uh, but now, looking back, I realize um, what they were saying. This is such a unique experience for each person. Um, there is no, uh, there's no set road to say this is exactly what's going to happen. For example, if you have a headache and you take uh, aspirin or Tylenol, your headache's going to go away. It, it doesn't work like that. Uh, what works for me may not work for someone else. What works for someone else may not work for me. Uh, someone else may be having different symptoms, may be having more frequency. Um, and it's almost as individualized as the symptoms that ulcerative colitis can can give us. Um, I know my symptoms were a lot different from other people's. So keep that in mind. You you are pretty much on your own. I mean, you still have your medical team. You know, I have my GI, I have my uh, nurse from the surgeon that I still will see and follow up with. But for all intents and purposes, you're kind of on your own journey here. Um, and you need to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work, what makes things better, what makes things worse. Um, and it's a little bit of, of trial and error, which can sometimes be frustrating, especially when you were dealing with all the colitis things. But uh, this is on a much more tolerable level because everything is within your control for the most part, uh, much more so, I should say, in your control than with the ulcerative colitis. So I just kind of wanted to, to put that out there um, from the get-go. So last time we talked, I was at uh, one month out from the J-Pouch and so I wrote down a little bit different things that were happening um, between weeks four and six. I noticed that I really needed to start eating differently because when I had the loop ileostomy, my food and water would go through me much more quickly than it does now. So I felt that I was eating a lot more to maintain strength and, and vitamins and minerals and energy and things like that. And now I've noticed <laughs> that things have slowed way down um, I noticed that with a little bit of a weight gain, uh, I got down, I was down to about 187 was my lowest uh, with my surgeries, and now I'm back up to 200. Um, part of that is because I'm back at the gym, so I'm hoping a lot of that is muscle, some of it's muscle. Um, but part of it is too, like I said, because I've learned I need to readjust my eating again. Um, I was also eating a lot of carbs and things like that to thicken up output. Now I can back off on some of that. So there's that whole little bit of a learning curve again with, with uh, what to eat. Um, I was still pretty gassy um, within weeks four through six. I was taking gas -X. I can't, I can't really tell if it helped or not. Um, it seemed like it may have, but you also don't know if it's just the gas has worked its way out or if the gas X was, was helping. So, um, but it's worth a try if, if you're having a lot of gas. Um, I didn't really try Beano. I know Beano can help before you get gas, um, but I never really was sure what foods were going to cause gas or not, so I didn't want to take Beano just because I wouldn't know necessarily if foods were going to give me gas. Um, I was still having one to two leaks um, at night in the Depends, and I think I think I talked a little bit about this um, before. One, I know because when you sleep, the resting tone goes down with the sphincter muscles, and you can have leakage, uh, especially in my case because I had the hand-sewn technique. 
But I also think because I was using the Calmoceptine a lot, that ointment to help with itching and uh, the skin splitting um, around the, the anal opening. Um, and then when you sleep, that Calmoceptine, you can sweat sometimes, and so it gets a little bit runny, and I think that can sometimes make those leaks look a little bit bigger than they actually are. Um, but again, this was back between weeks four and six. Um, it was still up at least two times a night. Um, I pretty much stopped focusing on doing my Kegels, um, the Kegel exercises where you're tightening your pelvic floor muscles. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, again, you can't really tell if they were helping or not, or if it's just the progression, things are getting better on their own anyways. Um, so, I don't know, I guess I should try to see if there's research out there where they've actually studied people who have done them and people who haven't, and to see if there's a benefit. Theoretically, it makes sense. You're exercising a muscle, it should get stronger. Um, but I have no good reason why I stop those other than I just got away from them. And at that time, I was also still taking seven Imodium a day, trying to thicken things up, slow things down, um, because my uh, surgical nurse was telling me, we want to get you down to eight times a day or less, eight times a day or less. Um, and now looking back, this goes back to what I was telling you, each experience is individual. It's great that they don't want you going that often, but I would have rather let things go to see how my body adjusted on its own. As long as I wasn't getting dehydrated and my skin wasn't breaking down, um, you know, in the buttock area from going to the bathroom so much. Um, so that's one thing I would have done different is not be taking so much Imodium um, back then. Um, and then I also touched on this already a little bit. The, the sphincter skin right around had split in a couple spots. Um, I don't know if it was from wiping or if it's from a little bit more acidic output uh, or from going to the bathroom frequently, um, but was continuing to use the Calmoceptine um, at that point. And it, it really does help. The Calmoceptine helps. Um, there's no way around it. I know it's a little bit messy, a little bit gunky, but it stops the itching because there is some intense itching down there sometimes. Um, and it does, I can't say enough about the Comoceptine, so. Um, then during week seven and eight, um, I was continuing to adjust my food again, still eating less than I was when I was doing, um, when I had the loop ileostomy. Um, and at, after six weeks, I was off that low residue diet. So I started introducing a little bit more foods. I've had asparagus, um, some cauliflower, um, more fruit and things like that. Um, I still get gas and I can't always really tell what it's from. Um, but right now I can't pass gas without passing extra. So the gas gets uncomfortable uh, at times. And so sometimes I'll go to the bathroom just to help relieve the gas, even though, you know, there'll be output also. Um, and sometimes that can throw my frequency off but it's not that I'm going to the bathroom because I have to. It's more because I'm just trying to relieve the gas and I, there's no way to relieve it other than going to the bathroom. So um, I did find out like my morning routine is I would have a bowl of cereal with a banana um, and then I would have uh, some yogurt or applesauce with my probiotic. It's a powder probiotic that I mix with, with that. Um, and then go to work and I, I'm usually, I leave the house at 7.30. I was finding like by 9.30 or 10, I was getting gassy and I was feeling the need to go to the bathroom because of the gas. Um, and then I found out that it's basically the cereal and the almond milk. So I don't know if it's because my stomach was empty and that's the first thing going in. And so the cereal has a little bit of fiber in it. Uh, but since I stopped that, now I make sort of my own breakfast sandwich on uh, English muffin and still have the applesauce or the yogurt with the probiotic. And I, there's no issues at work now um, with that time period. I'm going up at least until lunchtime without going to the bathroom. So um, I did stop the Imodium at the end of week number six because I just, like I said, I just wasn't feeling right. And I thought maybe it was, I told you I had that splitting around the, the sphincter and the anal muscles. 
Um, and I think it could have been because the ammonium was firming up my stool too much and I was having to push a little bit to get things out. So I think that was causing some issues there. Um, and I did start having poop-free nights um, between week seven and eight. So um, occasionally I'd have one, but then I'd also have nights where I had none. So, and it's much, much less um, than it was initially, um, which is a good thing. It was actually so much less that I was able to go back to just wearing regular underwear with um, just like an underwear liner. You get um, panty liner from, it's the feminine hygiene aisle. Um, but the liners is a just in case, but I don't have to wear the Depends anymore, which is nice. Um, I noticed I can drink a lot more. And again, you don't have to worry about that fluid um, issue of things getting too watery uh, with, uh, as you did with the loop ileostomy. I still do kind of wonder if I do drink too much and don't have enough food, if things are a little bit more liquidy, but I haven't noticed any concerning issues. And you probably should be drinking a little bit more um, to help with absorption of fluids. So um, I already said I'm starting back to healthier foods, trying to get away from carbs a little bit. Um, but I have heard if you get into too many fresh fruits and even steamed vegetables, that you can tend to go more just because those are fiber type foods. Um, I'm still kind of feeling my way with all of that. Um, so not getting too aggressive with the vegetables, but I am starting back. I haven't attempted salad yet. I want to, um, but I just haven't. Um, still, this is again week seven and eight, still up two times a night, but things were quicker. Um, because if I did have a little bit of an accident, it was very simple. It didn't really mess my underwear or anything like that. So it was a much quicker process. So I didn't have to wake up um, as much. Um, I also bought Aquaphor, which is a healing ointment. You find it by Eucerin and everything in the skincare aisle. Um, and sometimes I put that on, on my butt cheeks at night um, to help heal the skin uh, a little bit, and that seems to help too. It's not an anti-itch agent, but it does help with healing a little bit. Um, and I did notice when I was running between weeks seven and eight, that that feeling I had talked about before of needing to go to the bathroom because of the pressure when you're running um, was getting much, much, much less than it was initially. Um, I would get a little itchy sensation when I ran, and I wondered if that had to do with um, from the running and the gravity and the pounding, if I didn't get maybe a little bit of, of seepage, not enough to get in my underwear or shorts, but just enough that it made the sphincter or anal area wet and then that caused the itching. I'm not really sure, but it's just kind of what I was thinking. Um, so then I'm going to bring it up to speed now going into week nine. I'm basically feeling the most normal I've felt thus far. Um, a little, I'm a little over two months, almost two and a half months with the J pouch. Um, still having, starting to have considerably less accidents at night. Um, if I do get one, it seems to, not to get too graphic, but it seems to stay between my cheeks. Um, and so it's not really messing anything. I do get a little bit of the leakage that my nurse had said I would get um, and could get up until eight months, which is the leakage meaning seepage, um, like wetness, um, but nothing like I was having before. And I, like I said, I'm still getting up two times a night. I don't know if part of that is just a learned behavior now or not. It seems to be either midnight or 2.30. I usually go to bed about 10 or 10.30. Um, and I'm, it seems that I'm just waking up and I think, oh, I'm up, I should go to the bathroom so I don't have an accident later. It's not that I'm getting up because I feel like I have to go. Um, later in the morning, usually 4.35, um, I can feel if I already had a little bit of an accident um, or a little bit of leakage because you can just tell the sensation. There might be a little bit of itching or, or something or sometimes you can feel it. Um, and then I'll get up and um, take care of that. Um, but still, things are definitely progressing. 
Um, I'm back to the gym, basically full force. I'm lifting even more weight now than I was prior to surgery. So I feel like physically, I'm back. I mean, I'm doing cardio and running and full out hardcore abdominal workouts. Um, so I, physically, I think I'm I'm back to to where I was at before. Um, my frequency right now seven to eight times i would say there's days when i'm going seven i had a couple days where i went six but i don't know that i was eating a lot that day um i would say though on average i'm sticking around seven uh i get up in the morning i usually go when i get up um shower eat breakfast and i'll go before i go to work just because um and then i go to work like i said i leave the house about 7 30. i can go all the way till lunchtime um which is about 11 30 12 30 um, with no issues and then usually i'll go once before i leave work which tends to be about three i would say three three thirty um and then i might go when i get home um only because i know i'm going to go to the gym so i want to go before i go to the gym um and then a couple other times um you know throughout the evening so keep in mind those seven or eight times two of them are usually at night. So that's seven to eight times in a 24 hour period. Um, the medications that I'm taking right now, and they're mostly, uh, I don't think of them as medications, but they are. Um, I'm taking the probiotic VSL number three uh, because people with PSC are more likely to get the pouchitis, and the VSL number three has shown, has been shown to be helpful in preventing the pouchitis. So um, I take that, it's a probiotic, it's a powder, I put it in um, my yogurt or uh, applesauce. I take that every day. I take vitamin D3, I take a multivitamin, and I also take fish oil. So, um, but that's all I'm taking. Um, I had a few questions from, uh, from different people that had emailed me. Um, one, and I've gotten it a couple times, is do I regret my decision? Absolutely not. Um, I haven't had any second guesses saying, why did I do this? Um, that's not to say I don't have the, my days of, when is this going to get to the point um, that I would like it to get to? It's not there yet. Um, I would be happy to get down to four or five times a day. I'd be happy to see the itching go away. I'd be happy to see the nighttime um, leakage go away and the getting up at night go down to at least once that would be that would be my wish that being said things are very tolerable right now um there's no there, there's no issue anything like having the colitis at all so no i don't i don't regret um any the decision to have this done at all um and then someone asked me is there really no urgency and I know when you've had colitis for a while, that feeling of no urgency um, is important and it's hard to believe, but it's true. The urgency is gone. Uh, there is a sensation, the normal sensation that you need to go to the bathroom at times. Um, but it's like, if you can remember before you had colitis, if you have that option, um, it's just a normal sensation that you have to go if you're out doing things and you would hold it like normal. Um, you just, you contract those pelvic floor muscles like anyone would and you hold it and it passes in a matter of seconds. And then you don't think about it again or don't worry about it. Um, but there is no urgency, that feeling of, well, I have to go, I have to get to the bathroom within 30 seconds or five seconds, not there at all. Um, if I feel on my walk home that I have to go, I can hold it till I get home. Um, it's not an issue at all. So the urgency is gone. If I do tend to hold it and I'm getting, you know, to three or four hours, that, that feeling of having to go comes more often and I'll start to get a little bit more gassy. But it's still not that, that urgency that you have with colitis. So it's, it's m much, much better um, to deal with. Um, I also just want to catch you up on a couple of things. I was able to actually meet up with uh, 
one of the people I met who lives in Atlanta, who basically was within two weeks of me through this whole journey, and we had been emailing back and forth um, about our experience and stuff. So he came up here to do the Crohn's on Colitis uh, half marathon just this past weekend, and I was able to meet up with him, and that was really cool. Uh, just to be able to discuss everything and, and meet face to face, because we had been chatting over the past seven or eight months going through all this together. So that was a neat experience. Um, I also had emailed someone from Ireland who had had this whole procedure done because I had, I was feeling a little discouraged with the nighttime accidents and things like that. Um, and he emailed me back, was very positive and said, you know what, two months, he was still having a lot of issues and stuff, but he's doing phenomenal now. So it was just really nice um, to hear back from him and, and hear the positive. Um, experience with that. Um, I'm going to try to keep the videos, again, every month or so, but like me and my friend from Atlanta were talking about, um, you sometimes go online and you look for people's stories and videos of them going through this process, and then after they have the J-pouch, um, you'll see, you know, a month after, two months after, and then things kind of trail off, and then you never hear anything from them again. And we talked, and it's probably because you start to get back to a normal life, and um, you've already dealt with this for so long, the last thing you want to do is, is keep rehashing everything when you're feeling good, and I'm assuming that that's what happens, is people start get back to living their life, which they should be, um, and then get away from the videos. But I want to at least make a point to try to keep my videos up um, a few times a year, especially if I have doctor's appointments or if anything changes. Um, just to keep people informed about what's going on. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on uh, has to do with the scar and the incision. I went to my dermatologist for an unrelated issue and, and asked her about the incisions and she said they will flatten out over time um, and they will lighten. She said if you do go out in the sun at least for the first year use an SPF of 30 or higher um, so they don't, uh, the scars don't uh, I think they'll darken with the sun. Um, but I told her I was using Mederma and she said to actually start using something with silicone in it because the silicone helps with the collagen formation and it helps flatten the scars and lighten them and soften them. So I got a product called Scar Away at the drugstore. Um, and they look like big band-aids. And on the one side is a silicone um, stickiness. And you put it right over the scar, you leave them on for at least 12 hours a day, and one um, band-aid, if you will, is good for a week. You take it off after 12 hours and you rinse it or wash it, let it dry, and then you put it on again um, for another 12 hours the next day. And then after seven days you throw that one out and you use a new one. So um, I've been doing that about a week and a half, and I've noticed... Um, a difference already. I'll show you my incision and, and what it looks like, or both my incisions. But you can actually see parts of it are starting to lighten up already um, that fast. So I use three of the the, the band-aids on my incision because one for the ostomy, where the ostomy was, and two for the long incision down, down the center. So um, let me show you that. Bear with me while I adjust the camera. Um, this is just the crease from where I was sitting. Um, so this is the long incision and this was the ostomy incision. Last time I think this was all red and irritated. Um, that's all gone, the scar is gone. But you can see um, right here is lightened up a lot and down here is lightened up a lot. And I think that has to do with the the scar away silicone uh, issues or the the band bandages for the scar away that I've been using uh, so it's a good product it seems to be anyways if you're concerned about the scars or anything um, so I think that's it uh, at two months uh, as usual, if you have any questions, um, you can always hit me up at ucandpsc at gmail.com. And hopefully I'll be checking in again with you in a month or two. Uh, I don't want to 
tie myself down to a specific um, time frame um, unless something big happens. I don't go back to my GI or my nurse until the end of August. So um, it's the middle of June now, so I may wait till then um, to touch base with you. Uh, but if you ever are wondering if I've made a video, as I said before, just shoot me an email and I'll catch you up on, on how things were going. So that's it for now. Uh, as always, thanks for following my story, and I hope you're having a great summer. Bye-bye.